Hey everyone, if you are watching one of my videos for the first time, my name is Adrienne and I empower moms to provide a healthy and stable environment for their kiddos by teaching them ways to live toxin free and supporting them through homeschooling. So this video I'm going to talk about personality types because I think it's very helpful to know about people's personalities and just how they are best how they best learn, how they learn best, and how they, um, just how they function and operate, right? We are all different and that's what makes the world exciting, but it is helpful to know how some people, um, will react to certain things and, and especially as homeschool moms, how we can best serve our children and providing the best education in a way that they're going to enjoy school. So I first learned about Enneagrams from my sister-in-law. She is very passionate about Enneagrams. I didn't even know how to say it. Um, and I didn't know that it was there was so much information on it. So it took me quite some time to figure this out. And I'm not an expert. This is just from research that I have done online. But I got things that I thought would, I pulled things that I thought would be important as a mom and especially as a homeschool mom to know. So if you, um, I'm going to talk about what Enneagram is and then the attributes. So the things that those people in that Enneagram number have as characteristics. And if some of these start ringing true for your kids, maybe kind of test some things out and see if that might be their number. It's not really a hard, fast um, rule or there's not a super easy way to determine you just have to learn about the numbers and the Enneagram groups and then kind of figure out where your kids fit best. And that might help you as you plan your lessons and your day um, for their different personalities. So I did a video last week. Um, I just published it. So it should be available if you're watching this video. Um, and that was on colors. So four different colors. This one is going to be much more in depth because there are nine different Enneagrams. So again, nothing permanent, nothing um, super like black and white here. There, there's some crossover. It took me a while to figure out my Enneagram. I'm still thinking about my kids, um, but I think it's just interesting to pay attention to. So I think it's important to know yours and to know your children. The first one we're going to talk about is Enneagram 1, and this is the reformer. So the attributes of someone who is an Enneagram one is that they are rational, they're perfectionist, they're purposeful, they're outgoing, they're active. If it's a child, they're little adults, the order is very important for them. They have a strong sense of right and wrong. They may be very verbal about this and they may correct others. So their greatest fear is being wrong. So in a school setting, you could see how this would be very challenging because that's how we learn and make mistakes. Ways to relax for a reformer is to take a break. So if school is getting challenging, they might really benefit from a break time. Some other tips that I found for the kid who is the Enneagram one is to say what you mean and mean what you say. My mom used to say this all the time when we were growing up. Um, just stay true to your word. They need to, that consistency and they need to know that what you say goes and that you're not gonna change your mind or break a promise or any of that. Um, you wanna have rules to help them feel order. You might even wanna have like a homeschool schedule, maybe even posted so they know what to expect, they know what's coming next. And you have to remind them that making mistakes are normal and that's actually a part of learning and growing. Their learning preferences are visual aids and having structure in their schedule. So that's the Enneagram one. Enneagram two is called the helper. This child is caring, quiet, interpersonal, so very much in tune with other people, compassionate, people pleaser, they can be cautious, they're a giver, they have a servant's heart. Their biggest fear is being unappreciated. They need to have some way to know that they're appreciated in their, whether it's them doing their chores or doing their schoolwork. Ways to relax is, for this person is to be with the people that they love. Some tips that you might want to remind your child if there are two. Ask what they need. Make sure they know that they can ask when they need help. And you need to ask them what they need help with and what they need because they're probably not going to tell you. 
and you can help them take care of themselves. So a lot of times uh, the, the helper, the number two, Enneagram two, is going to put everyone else before themselves. So lots of moms feel like they fit in this category just because that's mom life, right? But if you're very um, particular when you're taking the quiz to figure it out and you really think about things, sometimes you are a different number. When I took the test the first time, I thought I was a two, but then I took it again and it wasn't. And when I read the things about the two, I don't really relate to those as much as I do a different number. If you have a child who is an Enneagram two, they're going to want working in groups and helping others as much as possible. So anytime you can incorporate group work. If you have a small family and you're homeschooling, that might look like joining a co-op or going to different social events so they have that community of that, um, that group setting that you're looking for or inviting a couple families over every once in a while maybe to do like a science experiment, something where they can work together if they don't have the siblings to do that on the daily. The third Enneagram type is called the Achiever. This person is very success driven. They're assertive. Their image is a super big deal. They're very strong willed and they're independent. Their greatest fear is failure. The ways that this person can relax is to do something outside. And some other tips that I found, you can remind them that you love them for who they are, not what they do. So even if they are not performing the way they want to in their schoolwork, or if they make some really poor choices, if they're mean to their siblings, you just remind them that you still love them and it's not all about their success. They are not what they accomplish. They are themselves and you love them for themselves. They like independent work and to have leadership roles. So anytime you're homeschooling and you can give them some work and say, go take care of that, they will thrive in that setting. Leadership roles, it's going to kind of depend on your situation because every homeschool family is different, but you might give them some additional responsibilities and say, hey, I'm giving you some more responsibilities because I know you can handle it and I trust you and this is, I'm giving you some more things that you're responsible for. So they will thrive in that environment. Number four, Enneagram four, is the individualist. They are very sensitive. They're polite, loyal, self-absorbed, expressive, and they want to be unique. This is very emotional. Their greatest fear is being ordinary or boring. They want to stand out. They want to be unique. A way that they can relax is to listen to music. A few other tips. You want to make sure that you're nurturing their creativity. So listen to their interests. Set your intentions for the day or for that block of time that you're working on, depending on their age, and just give them that creative space. They're going to want to express themselves, maybe in ways different from your other children. As a mom, you probably already knew that. Um, they thrive in lots of different areas. So they can do independent work, like the number three. Um, they like to show that they've mastered a concept in different ways. So if um, you're talking about like multiplication, there's lots of different ways to multiply, right? You can do the arrays, you can do the repeated addition, you can do just the memorization of the multiplication facts. Um, they're going to want to be able to prove that they know what they know in lots of different ways. So maybe giving them a little bit of freedom on how they complete certain assignments or if you give them a project every once in a while in your homeschooling life and that will give them that freedom for creativity that they so desperately need. Enneagram number five is the investigator. So this person is very intense. They're innovative. They can be secretive. They're logical. They love to read and they love alone time. So this is your introvert. They love having space and freedom. And their ultimate fear is being incompetent. Ways for them to relax, journaling, reflecting through writing. Um, one tip I found was to give them the space and the process to feel emotions. They're very intense. So sometimes they just need a little bit extra time to process through some emotions that they have. And as far as learning, hands-on activities and learning through exploring is going to be their best way to learn. So anytime you can do hands-on, 
even if you're doing multiplication, you can be super creative, whether you're getting out the Play-Doh or you get out the little, those little like counting bears that are different colors and helping them to see that multiplication is just repeated addition. Anytime that they can use their hands for learning is going to help them benefit them best in the classroom. The next Enneagram is Enneagram 6. And this is the Loyalist. They are, they kind of remind me like the Golden Retriever. Committed, responsible, they follow directions, change is very difficult for them. They're suspicious of others sometimes and they can be prone to anxiety. Their biggest fear is uncertainty, so not knowing what's coming. Ways to relax for them, take a nap. That might be where the golden retriever image comes to mind. Uh, something else that I found they thought would be helpful is to listen to them. Of course, it's always great to listen to your kids, but certain ones really need to know that you are really hearing them and you want to validate their feelings. Make sure that they know that you know about their feelings and that they're okay and that they can have them and acknowledge the whatever the emotion is. This Enneagram number really likes debating. So again, could be challenging if you only have a few kids or if their ages are really different, but you could meet up with some other homeschool families or maybe you do a group setting uh, every once in a while or a co-op. Anytime that there can be a debate, that's where the loyalist, this number six, is going to thrive. The next Enneagram is number seven, and the enthusiast is what this one's called. They are busy. They have lots of energy. They can be spontaneous. They can be distractible, curious, and they can easily make friends. Their biggest fear is being limited. Some ways for them to, well, one way for them to relax is to try something new. It's kind of fun. Learn a new skill, try a new thing. One tip I found was to give them time to learn on their own and make time for play. So within your day, you can have structured break times where they have time to play and they have to work in this chunk of time or give them some tasks that they have to complete and then they're able to play so they have that brain break and that time for exploring things, trying something new, maybe bringing the play into the learning, which would be even better for them. Maybe you give them some kind of challenge like you're learning about bridges in science and you give them Legos and say, build a bridge over this little river that I'm gonna draw or any way that you can get them thinking about what you're learning about in a different way and incorporate play is always a win-win regardless of what Enneagram they are, but especially for the number seven. They learn best in group activities where the concept mastery is shown in different ways. So they like to express themselves also, like the one that we talked about, uh, number four. Number sevens also like to show, they're kind of proving that they know it in lots of different ways. They're expressing themselves in different ways. So build a bridge with Legos, build a bridge with blocks, build a bridge with pillows, different ways that they can do the same thing and show that they understand the concept is going to help them thrive in school. Enneagram eight is called the challenger and they are confident, decisive, confrontational, they're a force of nature, they don't like being controlled and they search for freedom. Their biggest fear is vulnerability and the way that they relax and recharge is to spend time alone. Something that you can do for your child if they're an Enneagram 8 is to let them know that they're going to be given more freedom. So as they get older, they get more freedom, you relinquish more control. So give them the freedom as they're able to handle it and explain to them that as they can handle freedom, you'll give them more. So what, whatever that looks like in your family, again, homeschool life can be very different for different families. Um, maybe you want to give them a little bit of say in the schedule. Uh, maybe that will give them some ownership and give them that control that they so desperately need. Maybe you want to have uh, unstructured times in your day where they can decide what's happening, whether they want to continue school or take a brain break or do some yoga or play with Legos or whatever it is so that they have that control and freedom uh, from the what can be kind of monotonous to them. 
Uh, they thrive in school with challenging tasks and leadership roles. So if you have an Enneagram 8, you're going to want to be thinking outside of the box with your lessons. Um, give them something a little bit different or take what you're learning and do a little twist so it's a little bit extra, a little challenge for them. That will help them thrive in school. The last Enneagram is Enneagram 9. They are easygoing, agreeable, can easily calm others down. They struggle with staying on task and they can become complacent. Their greatest fear is conflict and a way that they recharge and relax is go outside. As a parent with an, an Enneagram 9 child, you can listen to them, ask about their needs and desires and encourage them to challenge themselves. These are your peacekeepers. The, the Enneagram name is peacemaker. So they're not going to want to confront. They're not going to be happy when there's lots of chaos or arguments. Um, so make sure that they feel heard and that they know that their needs and their desires are going to be met to the best of your ability. They like to work independently or in small groups. Um, not super large groups. So again, can be challenging if you have a small family homeschooling, but you can meet up with other families and get them involved in different activities like sports. Um, so anyway, I hope that gave you some value. I really love learning about different personalities and just kind of like what makes certain people tick. Um, that is fascinating to me. I will drop the link to the quiz that you can take if you're curious to find out what your Enneagram is and just remember to take it one question at a time and don't overthink it. Um, that was my problem the first couple times I took it. I was kind of overanalyzing things. Um, so just answer the question to the best of your ability and that should give you a pretty good result. And you can always take it again if you feel like you don't identify with what um, the number is that it gave you. So that's personalities based on your Enneagram type and how it applies in homeschooling.